wisps of white vapor surround mysterious mounds in marina. These are piles of compost, which generate considerable heat. Compost is just one of many ways we can recycle our food. And diverting food from the landfill is critical. Food leftovers make up 20% of our landfills. Monterey has a robust hospitality industry, so the city of Monterey is attempting to help decrease food going to waste. It's critical that we start diverting waste from landfills. You know, we're, we're really looking at capturing uh, waste that we're generating. Uh, most of what's going into the landfill nowadays is basically plastics and food waste. And really having a, a, a reasonable way of recovering that waste is, is what we're looking at. Uh, and a lot of what a lot of businesses locally are clamoring for, really, and to get involved with um, capturing food waste, especially being in Monterey, we have a lot of hospitality, a lot of hotels and restaurants that are interested in capturing that food waste and diverting it from, from the landfill. So what we're looking at is basically uh, a program where we can have it very uh, convenient for the participants to uh, be involved with food waste composting. It's right at the curbside, you know, making the collection there, making it easy curbside or at their loading docks, and then having that material taken out to the marina landfill where it can be recovered for uh, composting and energy production as they capture, you know, the breakdown gases, methane that come off of it. Special anaerobic digesters will create methane from the food waste for power and compost from the physical material. This system is the first of its kind in the United States. It allows the food material to be recaptured and turned into compost so you can grow more food. So it's a, a good example of closed loop recycling, which we like. Uh, it also keeps the material out of the landfill. We, we definitely see the future as one where we're, we're recovering the energy value from the material we receive. Uh, you know, waste is a resource. Before bringing this program to residential households, we are doing a pilot program with businesses. It has been a great success so far. The Monterey Bay Aquarium, the Portola Hotel and Spa, and Intercontinental the Clement Hotel all have programs in place. They hope the success of their programs inspire others to implement this important effort in other Monterey kitchens. I would encourage other businesses and restaurants to do it because we are, as a state, and I assume as a nation, maybe as the world, we're running out of space to put our waste. We generate a lot of waste, and this is an opportunity for us to divert that material and convert it into another usable product. I mean, we can convert it into a source of energy, through the methane gas, and we can convert it into a product that can be used in agribusiness. So we're preserving uh, landfill is the big reason we're doing it, but also we're looking at an additional resource from waste. We're on the on the Monterey Bay Sanctuary. Uh, it's a beautiful sanctuary. We pride ourselves in Monterey as being a uh, environmentally friendly destination to come to. And so doing this process is also uh, consistent with that philosophy for the area and for, for our property. And so I would encourage other businesses, if you have the ability to do it and you have the space to do it with the extra containers and you can uh, get your staff fired up and spirited about it and uh, you know make sure they understand it's a, it's a justifiable cause that uh, I'm sure that uh, they'll participate and it'll make it a better world for all of us. This is definitely a growing trend and the bigger the program gets the economy of scale will kick in and hopefully there'll be some cost savings involved. I think the other half of the business incentive is when you can tell people hey we compost we you know recycle our we repurpose our food scraps we keep everything in Monterey these food scraps become compost that is then used on the gardens of Monterey, and then we grow the food in there that we serve you in the cafe, and that's a really great story. So um, as that becomes more common and people begin to see it and expect it, um, you know, hopefully they'll pay the company with their business. People are, are wondering, where is the food waste bin, or where are these tomatoes grown, or what do you do with this stuff when you're done with it? And when the consumers are more informed, they start to expect more, and uh, the people who have, who can offer more, um, hopefully will get more business out of it. When we first started, it was a little bit of a struggle because I wanted to make sure we had the right components. Uh, storage was a big concern. Um, how were we going to transport the product? How were we going to hold the product? How long are we going to hold the product for? You know, it eventually does have a little bit of an odor that we really don't want. Um, 
So what we did is we worked with the city of Monterey. We had pickups on a regular basis. We had plenty of containers. And then once you start training all your personnel, which took time, it wasn't a perfect system, but today you can definitely walk in and see where the compost is for the food scraps, the recycles over here, and then the trash is over here. So over the last three to four years, I would like to think we're a good 95% there working with the system. There was once a time when recycling and yard waste containers didn't exist, but they were introduced and over time have become an ordinary part of our lives. We now divert much more away from the landfills and reuse these materials. The same must be done with our food waste, a significant load in our landfills each day. It could be as simple as adding just one more container next to the garbage and recycling and training ourselves to use them. Millions of people consume and waste tons of food throughout the year in Monterey alone. This effort is important. Well, there's a few kinds of waste in the food world. The bulk of it comes from all the, the preparation stuff, the roots of the celery, the skin of the potatoes, the peel of a melon, the peel of a banana, the skin of an orange, that kind of stuff. And sending that stuff to the uh, food waste collection is really a great use for it because there's really nothing else we can do with it. Some other waste that will end up in the food waste collection bins is burgers that get overcooked, french fries that fall on the ground, salads that go bad, things like that, and that's all avoidable. And that's, it would be unfortunate if we forget to take something out of the refrigerator or forget to put something away and it spoils or goes bad. So ideally we wouldn't have that kind of waste, but it's nice also to be able to catch that kind of waste as well. Uh, when it does go bad, it is spoiled, it is rotten. Um, obviously in the restaurant as well, we have things, orders come back, people don't like it, something's wrong with their order, and that'll be great food waste to throw in the food waste collection bin as well. And then eventually the people who, maybe they don't eat all their food, maybe a young child gets a pizza and only eats half of it, or someone just turns out not to be that hungry, um, that kind of food waste will end up as well. And it's really easy, it's low hanging fruit, and uh, I'm glad that the system is finally up and running. We're still a little high on the learning curve, uh, but it's everybody's pitching in, and some of the feedback that I've gotten from the uh, Waste Management District and also from the Waste Hauler uh, Monterey City Disposal is that we're doing, here at Portola, we're doing a pretty good job in keeping just food scrap waste in that, in that waste stream. We started out three weeks ago with five 65-gallon collection containers at our dock. We found out we were able to fill those up in about four days. So we've, we've asked for and we've received five more 65-gallon containers. So that's really helping with it. But you need to monitor it. You need to get the management involved. You need the ownership to believe, and they all do. So it was really a, a really easy system to learn. When you're here on the Monterey Bay Sanctuary and you're down the street from the Monterey Bay Aquarium, it's kind of part of a structure. Why wouldn't you do it? It's a gradual way of doing the right thing. We hope to see a future where every business and home will eventually have the food scrap container, where the garbage can is almost empty with less waste going to the landfill, where power along our bay and compost for our gardens and fields are provided by what waste we do have. If businesses are interested in participating, they can either call the waste hauler, Monterey City Disposal, or they can get in contact with me as well, uh, Ted Terrasas, is the sustainability coordinator for the city, as you know. So, but ultimately, it's just you know making that first initial contact. We can you know describe services that are available, the different kinds of cans and carts that are available, uh, talking about signage, education and outreach. You know, actually coming to the site if you need it. You know, maybe doing a walkthrough with your kitchen or food prep areas, and then from there we can scale, you know, depending on how much uh, support you need and, and working with making sure we're getting a clean product out to the landfill. This is yet another successful program that the city and community has enacted. In the last few years, we have banned polystyrene in plastic bags in Monterey. Add those efforts to food scrap recycling and we really are making a huge difference. If you have any questions or would like to look into starting the program in your business, call us at 646-5662.